Ms. Van Coolen, would we need these stipulations prior to this? I think that's what they're ironing. That's what I'm just asking okay. about uh, because he passed. All rise. All right, you may be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Council, please Excuse us, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, before we hear the, the next witness on behalf of the state, uh, I'm going to read into the record what's called a stipulation. Okay, a stipulation is are facts that are agreed upon by the attorneys. Generally, they're done uh, so that a particular witness doesn't have to come in and testify. Uh, you are to accept these stipulations. Uh, as part of the record and evidence in this case, as this stipulation has been agreed to by the attorneys. Uh, the stipulation uh, reads as follows. The parties agree and stipulate that Defense Exhibit 1 are fair and accurate copies of a portion of Rachel Anderson's apartment rental paperwork. Okay. The state may call the next witness. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. State of Paul Lisa Richardson. I'll get her from this concern. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer unto God? under the pains and penalties of perjury. Thank you. you. may be seated. All right, that is a microphone in front of you. Uh, it is important that you speak up loud enough so that the ladies and gentlemen of the jury can hear you. Okay. All right, if you would please, for the record, state your name, spelling your last. Lisa Richardson, R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S-O-N. All right, keep your voice up, please. All right, thank you. You may inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Richardson, uh, going back to uh, the second half of uh, 2017 and early part of uh, 2018, tell us what your employment was. I was a property manager at a, at a complex. And are you familiar with an apartment uh, complex in the east part of Columbus, uh, known as Cardinal Crossing? I am. And is that the place you were employed? I was. And how long were you with uh, the management company that uh, owned Cardinal Crossing? It was Cardinal Creek for three years. For three years, and yes. that did include the time of January of 2018? Yes. And how many units were in that apartment complex? 193. 193? It is. And was an address of uh, 3044 Allegheny Avenue, apartment number B. Was that within the Cardinal uh, Creek uh, complex? Yes. And is that a location here in Franklin County, Ohio? Yes, it is. Okay. And directing your attention back to that time frame, did you know or meet uh, two individuals uh, identified to as Rachel Anderson and... Uh, uh, Sean Griggs? I did. And did you personally deal with them in they, when they rented an apartment at that uh, complex? I did. And if I may approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. I'm going to ask you to look at an item that's marked as Defendant's Exhibit Number 1. In this case, it appears to be a Horizon Asset Management, Inc. rental agreement, multi-page document. Uh, with addendums, uh, and if we look at uh, about a third of the way back, is, is that page familiar to you? It is. And keep your voice up for the jury, and is your signature on that page 
uh, Paige as the property manager. Yes, it is. And is uh, Rachel Anderson's signature on that? Yes, it is. As well as Sean Griggs? Yes, it is. And those were signed the day that they rented the apartment? Yes, it was. And that would have been around May of 2017, is that correct? It's been a while, but I think so. Well, I can I approach the witness again, Your Honor. You may. There's a date on this uh, document. If you want to look at that to refresh your memory, can you tell us when that document was signed? May 15, 2017. Okay. And is it a one-year lease? Yes. And it uh, would be for an apartment in that complex? Yes, it was. And two bedrooms? It was. And it's a lower level and an upper level? Yes. And did you provide at the apartment uh, complex parking for the residents that rented apartments there? Off street parking? Um, yes. And Ooh. there was, was there additional parking for visitors as well besides residents? Um, you, you do, you allow one um, visitor's parking per household. Now, I want to, uh, did you know, uh, having uh, signed uh, as uh, tenants, Rachel Anderson and Shad Grings, you knew them then, correct? Yes. And directing your attention back to the morning of January 29th of uh, 2018, did you have contact with individuals in connection with Rachel Anderson and her residence at that apartment? I did. Okay, will you tell the jury... What happened that morning that you dealt with in connection with Ms. Anderson? Um, her job came up and they were um, just wanting to enter her apartment because they couldn't um, get in touch with her and that was just uncommon for her. Um, I just explained to her that I couldn't let them in because we have to do a 24-hour notice. Um, I tried to take the information, but they were insistent that something wasn't right. Now, the uh, rental agreement has a 24 notice provision that you just can't go into a tenant's apartment without their consent, uh, without 24 notice, correct? Yes. And you were concerned about that, correct? Yes. And the person uh, asking to enter was not Rachel Anderson or Sean Griggs? That's correct. And was Mr. Griggs still living at the apartment at that time? Um, I didn't know until I called him. He told me that he wasn't. So you called him that morning of January 29th? Yes, I did. And did uh, he relate to you he was no longer residing there? He did. Did you seek permission since he signed the lease back in May of 17? Did you seek permission from him to go in the apartment uh, I yourself? Did. He given the uh, permission since he was on the lease? Yes, I did. And um, what did you do uh, after talking to Mr. Griggs? Um, once he gave me the permission to enter, I just went and grabbed the keys, and we, me and the officer walked over to the apartment, and I went in. Now, when you say uh, the officer, how many times did you go in the apartment that uh, morning? Twice. Twice. The first time, were the uh, police there? Yes, they were. And had the individual from the job uh, called the police? Yes, um, her job called the police, and then, so that's why um, they were out there. When we went out there together, the guy was still standing there from the job. Um, I just sort of went in, looked around, and I, I just blew out the candle and then closed the door again. Okay, now you just mentioned a candle. Let me uh, ask you to look at an item I'm going to put on the overhead uh, projector. Um, this is an item on the overhead projector, Ms. Uh, Robinson, that's marked for purposes of identification in this case at States Exhibit A1. Uh, can you tell us what's shown in that photograph? That'll be her apartment, and she was in apartment B. She was in apartment B on the right-hand side where that light is on. Is that correct? No, she was on the side, on B. On the left side? Yes. Apartment C, which is adjoining, has the light on outside? Yeah. And does that depict the apartment that you leased to her and that we've been talking about? Yes. And it has an outside uh, entry uh, through that door that is labeled B? Are there any other points in which you can enter the apartment other than through that door? Um, yes, they have a back door. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, keep your voice up, please. Yes, they have a back door as well. 
You mentioned a candle. I have, uh, for purposes of identification, a exhibit mark that states exhibit A5, and there is a table that appears to be in the uh, first room of that apartment. Does the um, uh, candle you're referring to appear on that table? It does. Uh, there's a pointer there in front of you. Can you press the button on the pointer and show the jury where the candle was? So it's right there. No. Oh, up here. It's right there. Okay, that's the candle? It is. Are there some Venetian blinds there on the wall uh, to the uh, in, next to, door to the entrance? Yes, it is. And can you point, uh, if someone was on the outside looking in, I see a gap between those Venetian blinds. Would they have been able to see that candle? You would be. And upon your entry into the apartment, that candle was lit and burning? Yes, it was. And did you go around the apartment downstairs? Yes, sir. Did you find uh, Rachel Anderson downstairs in that apartment? No, I didn't. Did you go upstairs? Yes, I did. Uh, and tell the jury what you did when you went upstairs. When I went upstairs, I just sort of looked inside of the bedrooms and just opened the doors just to see was she laying in the bed or on the floor or anything like that, and I didn't see anything, so I came back out. Now, did you look inside the closets in the bedrooms upstairs? No, I didn't. Did you have any reason to uh, think that she, alive or dead, was in a closet? No, I didn't. I'm going to ask you to look at another item marked for purposes of identification in the state's exhibit A6. Does that show this candle from a different uh, angle. It does, right there. And that's the living room of the apartment that we're talking about? It is. After going around the apartment and looking for Ms. Uh, Anderson, did you report back to the interested uh, employer and the police that uh, you didn't find her in there? I did. What did uh, you do at that point as the uh, landlord uh, property manager for the premises? I just locked the doors back and went back into the office. You know, the door was locked when you went over there. It was, yes. And you had a key that allowed you to enter as the landlord, correct? Yes. And when you left after not finding Rachel Anderson there, you locked the door again? I did. And uh, when you went back to your office, as far as you know, did the, uh, did the um, man from her job, did he leave or did he stay? I, honestly, I don't know if he left or if he stayed. Okay. Did the police come back another time that Monday? Um, they did because um, there still was concerned about her being in there and me not checking everything. And so what happened? Tell the jury. Um, so um, I talked to Sean Griggs, and I, I told him that I didn't see anything in the apartment. Um, it was a candle that was blown, but I did blow it out. Um, he just asked me, did I check the closets? And I explained to him, no, I didn't check any closets. And he just asked that I would. So then at that point, me and the police officers, we went back over. Was there another man, John Kennedy, that had arrived at the scene uh, by that time? I don't know his name, but she did have a friend that arrived, yes. Okay. And... Um did you and that friend go into uh, apartment B, uh, um, Rachel's apartment? We did. I opened the door and he went in. He I went in. Did you go in with him? Um, I stood in the living room, yes. Downstairs? Yes. And um, again, you didn't see Rachel, correct? I did not. Uh, did uh, he go upstairs? He did. And tell the jury what happened next. Um, he went upstairs and he, he looked around and then you just heard him scream um, and then he came back downstairs and we all just walked outside and then the police officers came in. Did you, advise, uh, did you or he in your presence advise the, advise the police what he had found? Um, he did, yes. And did the police then go into the uh, premises? Yes, they did. Now, you mentioned the second place in which you could enter the premises besides the front door. Did you notice whether or not the uh, back entrance had a broken window or if there was any signs of forced entry back there? No, it wasn't any broken entry. That's, um, that's one of the things we check for just to make sure uh, nothing is broke and the doors are locked. And you did that both times you were in there? I did. Okay, thank you. I have no questions. Uh, 
Ms. Dixon or Mr. Thomas may have some questions. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Cross examination. Ms. Dixon or Mr. Thomas may have some questions. Good afternoon, Ms. Richardson. Good afternoon. Have we met before? No, we have not. I don't believe. <laughs> okay. Do you recall a time when I tried to talk to you at the office and I was with another gentleman? I do not. You don't remember? No, sir. Okay. Were you uh, under any orders to not talk about this case? Yes, sir. And uh, who gave you those orders? Um, the owners of the company. Okay. And you're no longer employed uh, with that company? No, I'm not. Uh, did you resign? No, I was let go. And did that have anything to do with this case or no, your sir. actions in this case? No, sir. It was a, a year later. Okay. Ms. Richardson, I want you to explain to the members of the jury, where is Central Crossing? Where is this apartment complex located? Um, Cardinal Creek is located um, right by the DAV down the street from the airport on the east side of Columbus. Is that near Afro Central High School? It's across the street. Is it off of James Road or Zettler Road? Um, it's off of James Road on a street called Allegheny. Okay. Did there used to be other apartments across the street? Um, I don't know. I'm new to the area. Okay. Describe for the members of the jury, <clears throat> Cardinal Crossing, you said it's 130, 193 units? It is. Okay. And you were there for about how long? About three years. About three years? Yes, sir. Well, there <clears throat> So it's on the east side of Columbus. Yes, sir. Were you having any problems with any uh, drugs or drug dealing in that area? Just your common, your common activities. When you say your common activities, explain to the jury what you mean. It, um, you'll, um, it's a, a complex, so from time to time you'll have like your car break-ins or just loud noise disturbance, things of that nature. Can you kind of describe for the jury, what is the racial makeup of that apartment complex? I don't understand, I'm sorry. Well, is it mostly black? Is it mostly white? Is it mostly mixed? It's a mixed How would you community. describe it? I would describe it as a mixed community. And you looked at State Exhibit 1, is that correct? I did. And if I may approach the witness, Your Honor. You may. State Exhibit 1 is the... Is it State's Exhibit or Defendant's Exhibit? I mean, I'm sorry, Defendant's Exhibit 1. Oh. Make sure that the record's clear. All right, thank Defendant's you. Defendant's Exhibit 1, thank you. Um, when you look at Defendant's Exhibit 1, and I'm going to direct your attention to, I think Mr. O'Brien also talked about the same page. One, two, three, four, five, page six. Do you have that exhibit with you? I do not. Okay. I'll just, can I approach? Yes, you may. You recognize that? I do. And whose signature, who signatures on that page? Um, mine, Rachel, Sean's, and our regional manager. Okay. So this wasn't signed online, was it? No. Rachel actually came into your office? Yes. And signed this in person? Yes. And Sean came in your office? Yes. Did they come in at the same time? They did. And they signed I, this? I in think they did. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't mean to stop you. I'm sorry. Only okay. oh, well, one of us could talk at a time. <laughs> I, I talk too much. That's okay. Okay, so I'm going to slow down. You think that they may have came in at the same time? Correct. But you're positive that they came in person? Correct, because and you have to sign in person. Okay, you can't do that? What about the application? Was that filled out online or was that filled out in person? In person. Okay. And you go over this information with them, and then you have an addendum. What is that addendum for? 
It just lets them know the, the different rules of the community. What is that addendum right there for? It's a block watch lease addendum. And tell the jury what's that for? Um, just, just to let our um, tenants know that they're responsible for their, you know, their, um, their premises as well as um, the activities that go on, either with them or their um, friends. Okay, so like read the first paragraph of the addendum. Residents, any members of the resident's household or guests or other persons under the resident's control shall not engage in criminal activity, including but not limited to drug-related criminal activity on and near the said premises. Drug-related criminal activity means the illegal manufacture, sale, distribution, use, or possession of controlled substance. So why is that a denim in there? Um, just to let them know that we don't, we don't allow that on our premises. You don't allow a drug dealing or? No, sir. And so you put that in there specifically to notify each tenant that that type of behavior would not be tolerated. Yes, sir. And do you do this because it's required, or is that something that management wants out of each tenant in these units? We do that because it's required by management. Okay. Now, <clears throat> once a person signs this lease, and I think you indicated for Mr. O'Brien that this is a one-year lease. Is that correct? Yes. If they wanted to get out of this lease, could they? Yes. And I'm direct your attention to page eight. Mr. Richardson, explain to the jury what is page eight? The eight is um, early termination addendum. And what is that? If they, they can pay three times their monthly rent to buy out of their lease. So they can get out if they want to without being uh, responsible for the total amount of the lease. Yes, they can. If they do it in a timely fashion. Correct. They just have to give us 30 days notice and pay the three months up front. Okay. Would that include an extra deposit? Do you take the money out to deposit or how do you do that? Deposit is waived at that point. Okay. And this was explained to Rachel? Correct. Well... Her signature is on the bottom of that, isn't it? Yes, it is. And she signed each page, the addendums and everything. Yes, she did. In person. Yes, she did. And you went over this with her? Yes, I did. Okay. And Sean? Yes. Okay. Now, you indicated that... <clears throat> Was it the police who came to your office the first time to talk to you about doing a wellness check or something of that nature? No, it was the employer. Rachel's, uh, one of her employers came to the job. How did the police get involved? Because I think the employer called the police. Okay. And so based on the uh, em employer, did he indicate that he knew where Rachel lived? Yeah, he said he had looked through the window and he saw that a candle was burning. And so I believe you indicated you could not talk to him or you couldn't go in. You had to contact Sean. Correct. And did you call Sean? I did. Did you get immediate uh, permission to go into the unit? No, he said that he would try to reach out to Rachel and that he would call us back. So Sean did not give you permission to go into the unit? Not initially, no. And was that the only time you talked to Sean? No, he called back and then he gave us permission once he couldn't get Rachel on the phone. Is that the only time you talked to Sean? Um, I believe so. So no, 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 no. I called. Um, I talked to him afterwards. Okay. So the first time you talked to Sean, he said, hold on, I can't give you permission. Let me check something out first. Correct. And how long was it before he called you back? Um, I would say, I don't know exactly, within 10 to 15 minutes, I would say. Okay. And you waiting on this phone call because you got this other guy standing there. Correct. Waiting to try to check, right? Correct. And you had a clock right behind you? 
I did. Okay. And so when he called back, did he tell you anything about a closet? No, he just gave me permission to enter at that time. Okay. And the second time you called Sean, or Sean talked to you, did he say anything about a closet? Not on the second time, no. So the third time when you talked to Sean, that's when Sean said to you, make sure you check the closet. Correct. That's when I told him I didn't see anything strange in the apartment. Okay. Do you know who lived, and I'm gonna show you what this, I think now, I think I'm right on this, this is the state exhibit. Okay, state exhibit 1A. Okay, you know what I mean, I approach the witness? You may. I ain't good at all this technology. <laughs> so I'm a good old fashioned man, okay? This is about to tell you I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification purposes as State Exhibit A-1. Okay. Tell the members of the jury who lived in apartment C. I couldn't tell you that. I don't know offhand. Okay. Who lived in apartment A? I can't tell you that. So, did you know, well, what, what made you know or recognize Rachel Anderson and Sean Griggs? Because when they come to the office and they say their names, the first thing we do is look them up in the computer. And so the people that lived in C and A, you didn't need to do that for at any time. Or well, that was prior to you working there. I don't understand the question, I'm sorry. You said that when people come in and make, make an application to move in the Garden Creek, you look them up. No, I said like when the only reason I knew that Rachel stayed in apartment B was because her job came in was looking for her, so I looked at her information up. Do you well what I'm asking you, I guess, is outside of her job calling in, you didn't have any interaction with Rachel or Sean? Just them paying their rent. Who paid the rent? Um Either. I can't remember, but both of them probably did at different times. So if I showed you a document from there indicating that the rent was paid by Rachel, would you disagree with that? I would not. You see that? I may approach the witness, Sean. You may. Give me one minute, please. We're going to count these pages. Page 17 of the Exhibit 1. 17 and 18. Ms. Richardson, can you look at that? Now, does that help you answer my question better as who paid the rent? Um, just because this says Rachel Anderson, that don't mean that's who came in. That's just whose name on the lease. So anyone can walk in and pay their rent. So 
when you look at this, can you tell if it's paid by check? I could, I could just tell that it was paid for either a check or a money order because the last three numbers are on the statement. Okay. But you don't have any independent recollection? I do not. So let me show you what's 17, 18, 19, 20. What is, low, what is that on page 20? It's a copy of a money order. And who's it from? Looks like it said Michael Anderson. Okay, and that is for a deposit? It doesn't say if it's for a deposit or not. Okay. How much is it for? $949.49. And how much is the rent? Seven oh five, I believe. And I think in this contract you indicated that, show you the last page, was that the deposit? Yes, it was. And that was with the prorated amount of the rent? Correct. Now, directing your attention back to January 29th again, you got a second visit at your office. Was that from a Columbus police officer? It was. And the Columbus police officer indicated that he wanted to see if you would do another check of the apartment? The, the second time? Um, no, the set, when the police came in the second time? Yes. Um, I, I wanted them to go in with me because I, we, I didn't find anything the first time. Did you call the police? I did not. So how did the police arrive? I do not know. Let it be said then that your testimony, you were sitting in your office and the police came in. Correct. And they asked you about this apartment, is that correct? That's correct. And again, you had to get permission to go in. That's correct. And I believe you indicated on direct examination that at that point um, <coughs> did any other person come into your office? Her employer came into the office. Outside of that, the second time when the police came in? Not that I can remember now. But you did see another individual, is that yes, correct? That's correct. And what happened then? Um, that's when I talked to Sean and he said that um, he wanted me to go check the closets and that his friend would meet us at the apartment to go in. So tell us, well, let me go back. The first time you went in, you saw the candle that Mr. O'Brien was asking you about. Correct. And you blew out the candle. I did. Now, did you notice anything else different about the apartment at that point? Um, no, because I had never been in her apartment as her living there. So you didn't see anything out of place or I did. any disturbances or anything like that? No, sir. And it was the same when you went upstairs? Correct. And it was the same when you went to the kitchen? Yes, it was. And you checked the doors? Yes. And when you got there, the door was locked? It was. The back door was locked? It was. There were no broken windows or glass? No. Um, could you tell when you went in there the first time if you could see a struggle? I, I, I couldn't tell. I, I don't know what that looks like. I'm sorry. Okay. But wasn't no broken glass or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, no. Didn't seem... Uh, out of the ordinary to you? It, no. Okay. The second time you went in, did Sean's friend or the guy that was there, did he have a key? No, I let him in. You let him in? I did. And I believe you indicated that you went into the living room? Yes. When you walk into the front door, you automatically walk into the living room. Okay, did you go past the living room? No, I stayed at the door the second time. Now explain, or tell the members of the jury, what did that person do? Um, he came in the apartment, um, he walked upstairs, he was looking around for a while, and then I just heard him scream. So he didn't go 
in and go in the laundry room or in the back to the kitchen area or any of that? Not that I can remember. He went directly up the steps? I think so. That's what you remember? I, I think so. And then you heard a scream. Is that correct? That's correct. And he came out? Is that right? That's correct. Did you see him go back in? No, we all left out at that point. You all left out at that point? Yeah, me and, me and the guy, me and her, his friend, we both um, left out the door and the police officers came in. Okay. And you were 100% sure that all y'all left? He didn't stay in there? I can't be 100% now. It's a while ago. I know I left out. You know you left out? Yes, sir. But you don't know if he left and came back in? I do not know. Let me ask you, do you know a person by the name of Benita Anderson? Um, I just know that she was a, a resident. And do you know if anybody stayed with Benita Anderson? I do not. I'm sorry? No, there was no one on her lease, no. There was no one on her lease? That's correct. Do you know Anthony Pardon? I do not. You've never seen him before? I have not. Do you know Allison Gamble? Um, I believe that's Benita's daughter. Okay. Did uh, Benita live out there? She did. Do you know if Benita had a boyfriend? I do not. Where did Benita live? In one of the one bedroom apartments. How far from Rachel? I can't say how far. I don't know exact, her exact address. Do you know where Benita lived? On the, I do not know her address now. I mean, you might not know her address number, but did she live down from the rental office? I'm a, I, I believe she stayed maybe one or two buildings, but I don't, it's, it's a lot of buildings, so I don't know her exact building now. Okay. And what about Allison? I know her building because we had to go over there, and I think it was two to three buildings over from the office. Did you ever receive any complaints from Rachel? No, we didn't. You know, I could have one minute, please. You may. Mr. Richardson, thank you very much. Your Honor, I have nothing for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Redirect. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Maybe uh, one question. Uh, um, from the time the man, uh, Trent Snyder, from her job came to inspect the apartment or asked you to inspect the apartment, till the time the man came down the steps screaming, you know, having found uh, her body upstairs. How much time are we talking about? Is it minutes? Is it an hour, two hours? Can you give me an estimate? I would say it's maybe a few hours in between, but I can't be exact. Okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Recross? Thank you, Mr. Richardson. All right. Ms. Richardson, you can step down now. I think you're not to discuss your testimony with anyone while this case is still pending. All right. State may call their next witness.
you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer unto God uh, under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, sir. You may be seated. I mean, I'm going to witness. Yes, in a moment. That is a microphone. It's important that you speak up loud enough. Matter of fact, just slide up just a little bit. Please. It's all still. State your name, spelling your last name. Jonathan Kennedy, K-E-N-N-E-D-Y. Thank you. You may inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, sir, um, do you, or did you know uh, Rachel Anderson? Yes, I did. Uh, when did you first meet her and her family? Uh, years ago. It was... Uh, my sister Haley's friend, uh, we met when we were children. So you knew her from childhood up until uh, uh, January of 2018? Yes, sir. I would say my teenage years, yeah. Did you, uh, where are you from originally? Uh, so from Warren, Ohio with my family. Did you all go to the same school together? Yeah, Warren G. Harden. And your sister you mentioned, Haley, was she the same age as Rachel? Uh, I believe they were the same age, yeah. And did they go to school together? Yes. And uh, although you knew Rachel, uh, you didn't hang around with her when you were in high school because she was younger, correct? Exactly. And if, um, if we fast forward a few years later, uh, did you and your sister Haley, who was Rachel's best friend, help her move from place to place? Yeah. Okay, please approach. <coughs> Excuse us, ladies and gentlemen. The objections overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> uh, Mr. Kennedy, I think the last question was, had uh, you and your sister ever uh, helped Rachel move from place to place? Yes, sir. And uh, will you tell us what uh, those uh, circumstances were? Uh, so there was a time that I brought my sister and some of Rachel's stuff to Cincinnati, I believe it was. Um, helped her move some of her things there. And was there another occasion when you uh, helped move as well? There was another time where I helped move uh, some of Rachel's possessions to her property here in Columbus, yeah. To the apartment uh, on Allegheny here in Columbus? Yeah, that was quite some time ago. Did you live in Columbus at that time? No, not at that time. I lived in Athens. Were you uh, going to school in Athens? Uh, no, my sister was. I was just a resident. And you moved uh, from Athens to Columbus, is that correct? Yes, sir. And at what point did you move actually to Columbus then? Uh, I would say the summertime of 2017, if my memory serves me correct. Did you learn from your sister that Rachel was residing here at that time? Yes, sir. Uh, me, and, me and my wife had moved out there, and we didn't know anybody, and Haley got a hold of me and said, oh, Rachel lives here. So uh, we got in contact and, you know, met up with Rachel. Now, what part of town did you and your wife, Tina, live in? Uh, the west side over near Hollywood Casino. From the summer of 17 until when did you move out from that location? Uh, we moved out right when, right before our lease was up uh, the following year after the tragedy there. And we moved to uh, Colorado. And is that where you're currently residing? Yes, state, sir. Colorado? Yes, sir. And you came back here pursuant to subpoena by the state, correct? Yes, sir. And if we um, direct your attention to that weekend when the, the tragedy that you mentioned occurred, uh, was there a special day that weekend that uh, you, you can explain to the jury? Uh, yes, so it was Rachel's birthday. Um, we got together with John and, and planned a birthday party for her. Um, when you say John, who would that be? 
uh, her, uh, Rachel's brother. Her brother, John uh, Anderson? Yes, sir. Did John live in Columbus or somewhere else? Uh, he lived somewhere else. I don't know where he resided at the time. But you had contact with him to plan Rachel's uh, birthday get together? Yeah, we got, we, we like made her a cake and got a little shindig together to have a good time for her and celebrate her birthday. Where was that going to be located? That was going to be at my house. At the apartment out near the casino? Yes, sir. And what day that weekend was it planned for? Um, I believe, if my memory serves me correct, we had the uh, birthday party that Saturday. Saturday? And do you remember what, uh, when um, her brother John got into town? Um, I, d I don't exactly recall. I think it was, I think it was the day before that, that Friday, um, as far as I know. Be assume that Friday's the 26th, Saturday's the 27th, Sunday's the 28th. Your recollection is he arrived on Friday. Yes, sir. And do you know where he stayed? Uh, I think he stayed at Rachel's house. The or apartment. At the apartment. Question. Yeah. Now, you knew where Rachel lives, uh, correct? Yeah. Had you uh, previously visited that apartment before uh, January 29th? Yeah, so me, me and Tina uh, were, were very good friends with Rachel, and we would always hang out over at her house or vice versa over at our house. Go out to dinner and uh, other locations uh, as a group? Yeah, we would go out to eat and, you know, explore the town um, or just sit there and make food at the house. Most of the time we would order in um, over at Rachel's uh, apartment. And what kind of uh, birthday preparations uh, were made for that birthday celebration Saturday night? Uh, we had a, a birthday cake that uh, me and all of our friends uh, made and got together for. Um, you know, we got drinks and food, some of her favorites. Um, and, you know, we decorated my house and got it real nice for her. And who attended this birthday get-together at your apartment that Saturday? My friend Brian and Justin, uh, me and my wife, uh, John, Rachel, of course, and uh, my buddy Ryan had a girl with him as well. And your buddy Ryan, is uh, he from Warren as well? Uh, he's from here in Columbus. He's here in Columbus. Uh, where was he going to school at the time? Uh, Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. Did he reside there? Yes, he did during the time that he was in, uh, in college there. On January 28th and 29th, he lived there, correct? In Athens, yeah. I, I actually had to drive him back um, after the party was over the following day on that Sunday. Do you know how many keys there were to Rachel's apartment uh, at, on Allegheny? As far as I know, there were two. Uh, one my wife Tina had that Rachel had given to her, and the other one Rachel had with her. You know, uh, or did you know then someone by the name of Sean Griggs? Yes, so that was uh, Rachel's ex-boyfriend. He resided at that location with her for a short period of time, uh, and then he abruptly left. I don't know any details. But in January of 2018, he was not residing there, correct? No, he was not. Did you learn... On Sunday at any time, uh, anything uh, about that key that Tina had, the extra key for Rachel's apartment? Uh, so Rachel didn't, didn't have her key. Um, uh, as, as far as I know, John had the key and uh, had left with it. And... Rachel had contacted Tina while we were driving Ryan back to Ohio University. And uh, we got back to our house and, you know, we kind of, well, Tina and Rachel set up a time uh, for Rachel to come get her spare key from us when we got back. Would there be a series of either calls or texts between Rachel and Tina or yourself on this uh, subject? Yes. And what time do you recollect leaving to take Ryan back to uh, Athens? <clears throat> I don't recall the exact time. My estimate would be uh, 
early afternoonish, uh, probably about one or two o'clock in the afternoon, is when we left to take Ryan back. And did you hear uh, from Rachel about John leaving with the key before or after you left for Athens? It, I believe that it was after we had left. Tina was contacted by Rachel. Do you know, did you uh, give an estimate, uh, you and Tina, as to when you would be back in Columbus and, and Rachel could pick up your key? The estimated time would be between uh, 5.30 and 6.30, but I don't recall an exact time. And you did get back to the apartment here in Columbus after taking uh, Ryan back to uh, Athens? Yeah, we went back to uh, our place and Rachel had met us shortly after and uh, got the key from Tina. And did you see Rachel when she came to the uh, apartment on the west side to pick up uh, that key? Yeah, so Rachel had a key to our house as well. Um, and she let herself in and we were hanging out down in the basement. I was laying on the couch um, and Tina gave her the key. Uh, we joked around and Rachel didn't want to stick around. She was tired um, and maybe a little hungover and wanted to go home. How long would she be at your apartment when she picked up the key that uh, afternoon slash evening? I would say she was there for less than 15 minutes. The next day, uh, did you have any contact regarding Rachel not reporting to work on Monday morning? <clears throat> yes, so um, specifically what happened was um, I, I was at home. Um, I had just taken Tina to work and dropped her off. And um, <clears throat> I, I didn't really directly talk to Rachel that day whatsoever, obviously. Um, Tina was contacted and got a hold of me with concern that Rachel wasn't picking up and this was out of character for her. Um, so I had gone over to the apartment. What did you do after that? Um, whenever, uh, can you re-ask re the question? Yeah, did you have contact with Sean uh, Griggs that morning uh, or uh, afternoon on January 29th? So that, that morning was a little bit hectic. Um, the first person I believe that I spoke to uh, was, was Kim, uh, who was quite concerned, and I talked to Tina. Uh, overruled at this point. Tell us who Kim is. I believe Kim uh, is like the secretary or I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but she's either the secretary or management of the uh, mortuary, uh, Sean, Sean Davis Funeral Home. Where Rachel was employed. Yes. And you had a conversation with her. Yeah, and, and she made it perfectly clear that um, she was very concerned for Rachel's safety and just wanted to know where she was and if she was okay. Okay, please approach. Excuse us, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, the objections overruled. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I think, uh, Mr. Kennedy, the uh, last question dealt with the discussion that you had with the employer, Kim, at uh, Shaw Davis. And um, as a result of that discussion and her concerns, what did you do? Tell the jury what you did. Uh, the, the result of that uh, discussion was I was trying to uh, check on Rachel and make sure that she was okay. Uh, I, I had looked through the window. I, I tried to open the... Did you actually go to the apartment then? Yeah, yeah. I, I had gone over to the apartment. And did you um, seek entry? I was I was trying to. Uh, was the door locked? The front and the back door were both locked. You were. Did you look through the window? I tried to peek through the blinds, um, but visibility wasn't so good. Um, I I proceeded to call her phone uh, over and over. Uh, a police officer uh, was already driving by, and I waved him down and. Uh, tried to see if he could gain access or entry to the property. 
Could you and, talk to the leasing agent or apartment uh, manager at the uh, location? Not, not right away. Um, I, I then had proceeded to call up Sean because um, in my mind he should have been on the lease and been able to give me at least access to the property. Um, and I think that Sean had gotten a hold of the leasing agent and um, they proceeded to, uh, well, well, she had proceeded to come to the property and the officer was still there on standby. Um, he didn't, I guess, have authority to go gain entry or enter the property there. Did you understand that Sean Griggs, who was on the lease, then gave permission for uh, friends of Rachel to go in the apartment? Yes. And with that uh, permission, did you and she enter the premises? Yeah, we, we, we entered the property. Tell me what you saw when you, in the living room area when you uh, entered. Uh, well, well, when I went in, um, the living room is to the left. Um, it looked like she had a food and drink there. Um, there was a bowl packed on the coffee table, and it looked like she was about to smoke a cigarette there as well. Um, yeah. Did you notice anything? Did you go into the kitchen? Well, immediately when I hit the front door was opened and I was allowed in, um, the first thing I saw that was her birthday cake was sitting on her little kitchen table. Um, so as you enter the property, there's a hallway that goes straight through to the kitchen. Um, and the cake was sitting there, not put away. And Rachel's a, a very organized person that would have uh, put that away the first chance that she got. After inspecting the lower level of the apartment, what did you do next? Uh, so after I had checked the downstairs and gone through the kitchen into the laundry room, I had turned back around. Um, I, there was a closet next to the staircase that I checked. And as I started going up the staircase, um, there was you know, some pictures knocked to the side and her Marilyn Monroe picture was gone, which I thought was a little strange. Um, Where was I, this Marilyn uh, Monroe it's in, located in the apartment? It's, it's in the staircase hanging on the wall. And it was not there? It was not even there. And I don't know what made me realize that, but that was gone. Um, I proceeded to go up the staircase and I didn't even go into her room yet. Um, I went right to the bathroom. And the only reason that I did that is because every morning Rachel gets ready for work. So I went into the bathroom, opened the door, felt the towel to see if it was wet, um, to, you know, to see if she had left or something. Um, I went into the spare room. What did you find with the towel? It was dry. It dry. was, yeah, it was, it was dry. Um, I went into the spare room that we were helping her get together and nothing seemed out of place. Um, from there, I, um, I turned around and walked towards her room, um, looked around. It was quite out of place, um, considering how it normally is. Um, and then I noticed that there's a closet door there, which I ne never had noticed because it's normally open and flushed with the headboard. And I went to pull the door and handle and uh, it felt like something was pulling it back and I pulled it and there was something tied around the, the door handle so I pulled it out and here came here came Rachel she was tied up in, in the closet and what did you do next John I lost my shit I screamed and pleaded that she was okay. I tried to see if I could help her. I was screaming for her. But any direction that I pulled her, it just seemed like I was choking her. So I started screaming and I ran out. Around downstairs and did you advise the police officer was downstairs what you had found? Yeah, I was... I completely lost my mind. I was I was trying to get him to to go back in there. There were the cords around the doorknob. Yeah. Uh, that is on the outer part of that uh, closet. <clears throat> Did you notice whether or not there were I, I cords over the top? 
I wasn't fully aware if it was on the outside of the door, but when I grabbed the handle and pulled it, it was clearly wrapped around the inside of the door. That's a for sure, hey, that's a for sure yes. I'm going to uh, Mr. Kennedy put up a few uh, photos of some of the things you have testified about and ask you to identify them for us. There is an item that's previously been identified as State's Exhibit A1. Can you tell us what is shown in that photo? In that photo is a lamp and a chair that were already sitting outside of the property when I arrived. Now, is this the address we're talking about where Rachel lived, 3044 Allegheny Avenue yes. in uh, the apartment complex? Yes. Here's a photo also previously identified, State's Exhibit A6. Can you tell us what that appears to be? That's her yoga mat with her coffee table we would sit around. Um, that her couch in the living room that we talked about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. And there is, uh, looks like a... The beanbag chair and pillow on the floor is normal because she liked to sit right there because if she was on the couch, she would lay down. Here is another angle of an item previously marked for purposes of identification is State's Exhibit A5. Is that a different angle in the same... Uh, uh, Living room? Yes. And does there appear on the, the table to be a cup of uh, some kind of liquid uh, with a straw coming out of it? It definitely looks like an Arby's cup. Here in the witness, uh, or excuse me, um, this is an exhibit not previously marked and identified, but will be later in this case, states exhibit A165. You mentioned a birthday cake. Uh, is that the birthday cake you saw? That's it right there. We, we, we wrote that out and, and made that for her. And is that the cake uh, that you and your friends made for the party the day before? Y yes, sir. And did she take that home with her after the party? Yes, sir. Also marked for purposes of identification, I'm going to ask you to look at is State's Exhibit A46. The closet door in Rachel's bedroom, is that uh, uh, appear as you saw it that day on January 29th? That's only a slight representation, representation of what I saw that day, yes. If you see coming from the door handle of that closet, it appears to be a a white uh, item going down towards the floor. Did you notice that when you were there? Yes, whenever I grabbed the outside of the door handle and I pulled the first time, I noticed that there and I, I pulled by the door and the cable because it was so tense on the inside. From your observations, it appear Rachel was deceased at this time? At first, I... I wasn't fully aware and I tried to, to help her, but after that time I realized that she was, she, she was dead. Here is a closer photograph, State's Exhibit A99, that will be identified by some others later. Is that uh, appear to be how Rachel was Yes. Found by you in the closet that morning, January 29th? Yes. Did you that morning, Mr. Kennedy, then uh, remain at the premises and give a statement to the police? Yes, sir, I did. And did the police, uh, as we saw when State's Exhibit A1 put crime scene tape around the entrance and uh, secure the premises? I don't know. I was in a police vehicle in what they call a paddy wagon, I guess. Was... And is that where you gave your statement to detectives <clears throat> when they arrived at the scene? Yeah, I was. Yes, sir.
Going back to the night before, do you have a time frame when you think Rachel may have picked up the uh, key? I'm not absolutely certain of the time that it was. There were some texts back and forth that may be able to identify or narrow the time frame. Would that be correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a minute, Your Honor. You may. Mr. Kennedy, uh, based on your contact with Rachel, uh, were you familiar with her car? Yes. Uh, and when you arrived there, uh, did you find her car parked in front of her house or somewhere else? It was on the side of the property, which is completely out of the ordinary. From your past experience, would she typically park in front of the house or in the location you found at that She day? parked right in front of that house. She did not trust that place. So she wanted to be as close to the door as possible. Now, uh, on the night of her birthday party out at your um, apartment, uh, you mentioned buying provisions for the party. Uh, uh, most of the people there were in their early, mid-20s, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. And was marijuana or weed uh, present at the, uh, at the uh, party, and did uh, most of the people there smoke marijuana that Yes, night? sir. And... Uh, Within Rachel's apartment, did she keep a small jar of marijuana, to your knowledge? Yes, sir, definitely. And were you familiar with where she kept that? Yes, sir. And were, did you see that there on the 29th when you were there and found her body? No, I did not. That was missing? Yes, sir, it was. It was missing from the location that it's always at. The room upstairs that you described, uh, uh, did it appear uh, that it was how you may have observed it in, in the past, or did it appear in uh, any kind of disarray? It, it appeared to be in disarray. And Rachel was 24 years old on that Saturday that you had the birthday party for, correct? Yes. I have no other questions, John. Um, Mr. Kennedy, uh, Mr. Thomas will have some questions. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I can get you back in the jury room, uh, let's say at 3.05, and we'll get you back in here as close to that time as we can. Uh, again, remember the admonitions that I've given you with respect to discussing this case among yourselves or with anyone else. All rise for the jury. Give one back in about 15 minutes. Thank you.